Singapore, we are proud of our amazing food culture. Plus, cheap food is not hard to find. But in this first world food paradise, not everyone gets their tummy filled. Yes, even here, there are people who go hungry. But hunger in Singapore is not about having absolutely nothing to eat. Often, it means being able to only afford instant noodles, cream crackers, canned food, and sometimes Sana, you can eat on berries every day. Okay. You tell me. Sometimes the bread we don't eat until finish. Uh. Sometimes we divide the day two, two, three days. For like four years at least, I actually skip a lot of breakfast and lunch. So the worst case scenario for us to eat was the rice, hot water, and salt. Uh. This is food insecurity. Food insecurity to me is someone who don't really know when the next meal is coming. One of the issues of food insecurity also is that it's associated with inability to choose the foods that you feel suit your needs uh, and life the best. The low-income elderly people, larger families, working poor. People who, even though they're working age, have legitimate barriers uh, to work. The people who are food insecure are really diverse. When Fionn Pua first met Katie, the eight-year-old left a deep impression. Because I always have this habit each time when I finish eating, then I buy some extra food at home with me. Because every time I know that uh, there is always a purpose, the food will definitely find someone that really needs to eat. Fionn is the founder of Keeping Hope Alive, a volunteer group helping residents living in rental blocks across Singapore. I was at this corridor and I discovered a little girl. Every children are being taught that you know don't speak to strangers, don't accept strangers' food. I'm quite surprised that when I give it to her, I say, Will you Her first reaction was, And that really caught my attention. Later that week, Fionn and her volunteers came back to the house to help Katie and her grand aunt clean up the place. Hello, Hello. Nothing found inside the fridge, nothing to eat. What she survived every day is on this cow kind of potato chips. Okay? Just on gummy as a main course. There's nothing she can eat. When I push open the door, what I see inside is that I know that her living condition is not, not suitable for her. To get to the bottom of the family situation, Fionn spoke to Katie's father. The father is, a, is actually very willing, as a willing father, to bear the responsibility. Yeah, but he has to work more than 12 hours. He really don't have much energy on the daughter. Sam is a single father. He works as a security officer and makes about 2,000 Singapore dollars a month. The problem was, for three years, most of it went to paying his debts. That time, my job wasn't stable because I keep falling sick. I wasn't able to really say concentrate because of the family issues. Katie is also hyperactive and Sam struggles to keep up. I did not tell her that actually I'm very stressed. Uh, I just keep quiet and coping myself. Uh. In 2016, Sam stopped working for a couple of months. To pay for the household bills, he resorted to borrowing from licensed money lenders. That's how he fell into the debt trap. Every month he had to borrow money just to pay back the previous loan. This left him with less than 200 Singapore dollars to spend on food. Katie receives financial assistance from the Education Ministry and gets one free meal at school a day. Mm. 
Getting help remains a challenge for Sam's family. For households in financial need, the Comcare Fund offers short to medium term assistance. But to qualify, applicants need to have a household income of 1,900 Singapore dollars or below, or a per capita household income of 650 Singapore dollars or below. Sam's income of 2,000 Singapore dollars falls just shy of the criteria. When we think about targeting social welfare services, we often have this idea in the back of our heads that we need to do some kinds of means testing. Objectively speaking, there's nothing wrong with that concept because we don't want to waste volunteer time or taxpayer money uh, on people who genuinely don't need the help. The risk, however, is that there are going to be gaps. There are going to be households, for example, who are not adequately outreached to by, let's say, a universal program. Here in Singapore, you'll have, for instance, the dad is employed but just running from odd job to odd job. And so they are one paycheck away or one sickness away from being in trouble. Shang'e knows all too well what this is like. Hi. Hi, good morning. My dad was a KFC cleaner and my mum was doing many contract jobs like condominium cleaner. In 2009, his mom stopped working due to vascular disease in her legs. A year later, his father also lost his job when he was diagnosed with psychosis. So my dad got five years of MC for IMH. To 10 to 2015, he said, I'm fit for work. So we were like, the sober winner, gone. At the age of 12, Shanga then started working as a cleaner with his uncle to support the family. Three days. Yeah, we had no water, no food, no electricity. Yeah, but we eat a lot of cream crackers. Our Asians are always full of biscuits. We get our water from our neighbours. Uh, then like sometimes no light, so we just go to our neighbour's house and use the outside the house light. Maggie Mee, most of the times. The worst case scenario for us to eat was the rice, hot water and salt. Shanga's family applied for food rations and financial aid from their family service centre and the Singapore Indian Development Association. The Community Development Council also helped with their utility bills. But... Many years. For many people on assistance, the money is used to pay off bills first rather than on food. Or worse this when we drain the water, we drink the water as yeah, it starts. So like one of us gets to eat that, that moist luxury porridge then another one just drink the water. Hunger doesn't just affect those who live in rental flats. Some living in purchase flats. But there's so many other issues they get embroiled in because of the, their timing, their age, their family situation. Fahana is a mother of five, living in a four-room flat. She told us a story on the condition that she will not be filmed. It's not about where we stay. It's about how we struggle daily. Shortly after we moved into the flat, leaks and floor cracks developed. To do renovations, we had to borrow a few thousand dollars from licensed moneylenders. My husband earns $1,900 a month as a technician and does food delivery on the side. After paying for our loans, bills and school expenses, we are left with less than $50 for food a week. Comcare assistance is to provide for those that cannot meet their basic uh, uh, daily expenses. Regardless of uh, housing background, we look at uh, sources of revenue, we look at uh, savings. Whether or not the applicant himself is currently working and drawing an income, a uh, spouse could be working. And we also look at uh, uh, family relationship, are they still together? Uh, there could be kids, uh, there could be parents that the uh, applicant uh, needs to support. 55 year old Azar has been unable to work due to health problems. In 2014, he started to get cramps and tremors in his limbs. Doctors suspect he has Parkinson's disease. I cannot control myself and I fall down, broke my hand. Azan relies on financial assistance from Comcare and the Islamic Religious Council of Singapore, or MUIS. Each month, he receives a total of 600 Singapore dollars. Every half a year, he has to reapply for Comcare assistance, which takes at least six weeks to be approved. Comcare assistance is meant to be a short-term and a medium-term assistance. 
uh, depending on the, the circumstance of the family, uh, there is flexibility to decide how long the assistance uh, should be. In the meantime, Azan talks up on instant noodles and cereal. When we met him, he had been waiting for more than two months and he was running low on supplies. Nothing inside my own. My fridge. Want to see? I got nothing left. There is a concare interim assistance uh, that we provide for uh, urgent, immediate cases. Is that something that they can apply for while they are waiting for the assistance? Yes, indeed. Azar hasn't asked for interim help. Yeah, to survive, huh? eat up like this. First month you can, you can eat, the second month you can eat, the third month come to the same food, the same every day. I you like to work, then sitting at home. Work better, right? You got your own income. I see, see uh, if uh, I take this medication can cure. Uh, if can't cure, I try my level by best. Uh. A meal like this doesn't look too bad for one day. But what happens if food looks like that every day, every month, for years to come? So to find out, we tracked the diet of Serene for seven days and then we consulted a dietitian on the long-term effects of her eating habits. This is Serene, and she's 39 years old. She is a mother of four teenagers and an eight-year-old. Now, Serene told me that she has about only $10 to $15 a day to prepare one meal for her family of six. So that means that she really has to stretch that budget. All right, let's take this day as an example. Now, she only had one meal a day, which was dinner, and she cooked miso soup and potato wedges. Now, Serene also told me that usually she'll have very little of the sides because her children have huge appetites. Now, on this particular day, she only had one bowl of miso soup and two to three pieces of these and a bowl of white rice. And that was just her only meal for the day. On another day, she had curry for dinner, which again was her only meal for the day. She had some chicken, two to three pieces of carrots and also potatoes. Uh, now you can tell from these two days alone that her meals generally are missing or low in protein and fibre. I also noticed that Serene uses frozen hash browns a lot. How much is it? Her meals in general lack variety due to considerations like cost, convenience and her children's preferences. So they rely a lot on frozen, deep-fried food which are high in saturated fat and can give her high cholesterol. According to the dietitian, if Serene continues to eat such food with little nutrition, coupled with the fact that she skips most of her meals, she could develop chronic diseases like diabetes, malnutrition or vitamin deficiencies. But what about when conditions improve? Do all these problems with poor nutrition go away? Today, Shanga is in a better place. A polytechnic student, he brings home a thousand two hundred Singapore dollars from his internship and part-time work. The family eats much better now. But the years of hunger have left a lasting impact. Gastrointestinal disorder medicine. Is it here? Ah, yeah, it's here. Yeah, it's here. Recently, I got it from my company. Uh. Gastrointestinal disorders. <laughs> because the sour pain is unbearable. After I started adding money, I, I ate too much already. <laughs> I ate over <laughs> the limit. Chicken wing? Hot dog? Fish cake? Otak? Yes, yes. Okay, and uh, luncheon meat. According to one US study, those who experience poverty have a much harder time regulating their food intake. This could be due to the years of being conditioned to eat when they can, instead of when they are hungry. Yes, this really is what Shanga can eat in one meal. Yeah, I think the past impacted me a lot and now that I'm able to do what I want to do, I just cannot let go. I probably will get another illness, I guess. The person that eating too much can also cause like fatty liver or don't know what thing on. 
But I told doctor off like I don't care because I want to eat, you know, finally I can eat, so I should eat. But hunger also has a more insidious impact. It takes away your ability to plan for the future. For single mother Noor Ayin, making sure that her children are fed is a daily concern. She was left to take care of five children on her own after her husband at the time was jailed. As a part-time food delivery rider, she made 300 Singapore dollars a month on average. Things like having a savings plan or looking for a job with better prospects were far from her mind. I have to take care of them like 24-7, make sure they go to school, make sure that I fetch them from Ishun to Haogang, make sure they eat every day. At one time, I almost got depressed. I cried every night. I thinking about what will come tomorrow. Yeah, every night. People in poverty have what sociologists call reduced cognitive bandwidth, which limits their ability to make better life choices. Solving the food problem gives them more attention to other things in their life. You know, upgrading themselves, paying bills, buying an extra storybook, you know, for their kid. I think those are important. In 2018, Ayin approached the social service office for help. The first thing they did was set out a plan for her, find childcare, expedite her application for a home, and finally, help with a job search. Meeting these needs helped to turn the family's life around. Ever since we um, have the house, then uh, convenient for them to go to school, just the next door, then I have got my own job. She is now working in retail as an operations specialist. And I got uh, milk, uh, oil mm. and uh, milk powder. Milk powder. Yes, got yes. from F Family Service Centre and uh, FFA. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Every 29. I'm really like uh, thank, thankful to the organisation that really helped me like um, MSF, MUI, um, my counsellor from my family service centre. Indeed, for those in need, there's plenty of help on the ground from social service agencies, volunteer and grassroots groups like these. Eastwood South has a welfare fund that helps residents tight through tough times, such as when they are waiting for comb care assistance. Normally, I will do two things when I found out that situation. Uh, I will first ask SSOC whether they can shorten the waiting time, which most of the time they do. And the other thing is also we give uh, temporary help. And uh, we also work with uh, Food from the Heart. Uh, they give out uh, bread every Wednesday and give, give out groceries once a month. Okay, bye-bye, uh. bye-bye. Okay, yeah. 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 For now, Sam and Katie have found help in Fionn and the volunteers from Keeping Hope Alive. They buy lunch regularly for Katie and her grand-aunt and are helping to tutor Katie. They are working towards helping the family become self-reliant again soon. <laughs> Now I have my job to keep the house going. I mean, food should not be any problem. We, we believe in many helping hands uh, where actually uh, many partners uh, step forward, do their part uh, for our society. Uh, it's very important to build a, a caring and inclusive society uh, and, and for different players uh, to be able to contribute to this uh, effort uh, collectively. But I think the reality is many households either don't know about the welfare scheme so they won't come forward or they may feel embarrassed at identifying themselves because of the uh, stigma associated with seeking help. And this is a real concern because again, uh, even though in Singapore we're unlikely to see such families uh, starve, they will have to make choices that compromise their longer-run nutrition and health. And I think that's what we want to guard against.